Hi, welcome back to week three of the Endless Energy program. I'm so excited to have you here. It's been so awesome interacting with you guys on Facebook, finding out about your big whys, what's been going on for you, what questions have come up, what challenges have come up. Keep on coming. If you've got questions, please send them my way. So, of course, you remember I'm Dr. Jen, OBGYN, hormone specialist, and chief medical officer of BodyLogic MD. BodyLogic MD is a nationwide network of doctors that I'm going to tell you a little bit more about later in our hour today. So every time we've had a session, I've shared with you something a little bit more personal about myself. And this is a picture of me and my husband, Adam, um, on a motorcycle trip. We took a motorcycle trip from over the Pyrenees Mountains from France into Spain and back to, no, the other way, Spain into France and back again. It was amazing, and this was part of the trip. We saw Costa Brava in Spain, which is just a beautiful coastline. And um, I show this picture because this was a really awesome, happy time for us. But I'll tell you, it wasn't that way for us a couple of years back. And um, I know I hear so often from people, one of the excuses that people make about not being able to keep to a good diet program keep to an exercise program is a lack of time. And I'll tell you what, when my relationship wasn't going well, I felt like I had no time whatsoever. And one of the things that I learned was that my lack of time was not necessarily a true lack of time. It was my lack of time that I was creating and allowing. And what was happening really was Basically, we went for couples counseling for a couple of years. Things weren't good and they were just getting worse and worse. And the couples counselor, he really didn't seem to know how to help us anymore. And I remember one day that I was going to go to the gym and I sat in the parking lot of the gym and I and I just broke down and I cried and I and I played the same sad song over in my car for like an hour and a half thinking that things were just really going to be over for us. And this was, we were married about 17, 18 years. And, um, and so I sought out another therapist to see on my own, to try to figure out how I was going to, if I was going to get divorced and if I was going to get divorced, how I was going to get through it, how I was going to get my kids through it. John and Lexi are 12 and 14 now. So they were younger than that then. And, and you know what? She told me the the most amazing thing she brought up to me. She kept saying, every time I told her, you know, my husband's a jerk, my husband's this, my husband's that, and my husband, my husband, my husband, blaming it all on Adam. She kept saying to me, well, what about you, Jen? What's what's your part in all this? And I had no idea what she was talking about at first, actually. And then I found out, slowly over time, she taught me, my part was that I was overdoing. I was doing And it was a habit that was ingrained from when I was a kid. I would take on other people's moods. And if somebody was in a bad mood, I would feel like it was my my duty, my job to fix it. And maybe that's partly being a woman because we're nurturers. And maybe it's partly even being a healthcare provider because we're nurturers too. Um, You know, but what I find now that I share this story with women in my practice couples in my practice and even couples on stages when I talk people come up to me afterwards and they say oh my god you're 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 telling our story I had a couple just recently who came up to me married 45 years and they're both came up to me separately actually and said that I was telling their story and so what I figured out was that I had to stop doing everything for everybody else that they could and should be doing for themselves and that wasn't only for my husband that was also for my kids my parents, everybody around me in my life. And you know what? That gave me a lot more time in my life and a lot more time to do the things that were a priority for me. So the top three things that I have learned in therapy from this amazing therapist, her name is Anita Riggs. She's amazing. She has taught me so much. And the three things that I want to share with you that I've learned is number one, if I'm not taking time for myself, I'm doing myself and my relationships a disservice because when self-care is low, resentment is high. Seriously, write that down because it is so important. When you're feeling resentful, 
that probably means that you're not taking enough care of yourself. And that was really the case for me. Number two, if I feel resentful, I have to figure out where I'm taking on stuff that's not mine. That thing that I told you about, you know, worrying about other people's moods and trying to figure out how to fix their moods, trying to walk on eggshells to figure out how not to upset somebody. If you're doing that, you've got to figure out what's really yours and what's really theirs and send that stuff back to where it belongs. And three, try not to do things that you don't really want to do for someone. Because if you don't really want to do it, you're going to wind up with resentment. And if you wind up with resentment, it's one of those stressors, one of those emotional stressors that weighs you down that we've been kind of alluding to and talking about during this whole program and kind of treating them as if we're not changing them and we're not going to work on changing them. But I couldn't resist really sharing this story with you because what happened when I started to employ those practices was what you see in this picture. Our relationship has blossomed again into this beautiful, amazing, amazing place. And we're celebrating our 20th anniversary and we couldn't be happier. And it's unbelievable what taking care of myself started for us in our relationship. It really helped us heal and repair our relationship. And I hope this will help you because you know what? Getting having a better relationship has helped my energy in untold ways. And if you've had some of those problems in your relationship, it's taking a toll on your adrenals and your cortisol. And I want to help you get back to that place where you're not spending your cortisol on things that there's no reason for spending it on. I really think that this is another thing that has really added to my energy. And of course, the positive energy in my life and in my relationship. So I'm happy to share it with you and I hope it helps you. So again, endless energy is the most important thing that you need more of right now. It's going to help you get your spark back. It's going to help you have deeper connections with people. And I think really when it comes down to it, that's what most of us are after. We're after a deeper connection to our partner, to our children, to our parents, to our friends. And if you don't have a, a partner, you want a partner, you need energy to go out and get all of these things. Maybe it's to get ahead at work, a promotion that you've been wanting and you need more energy for that. There's Maybe you want to get in better shape and you need more energy because you just feel like you can't exercise and you don't have the dis discipline to eat properly. But hopefully, since you've been doing some of the some parts of the program, you've started to see your energy get a little better. And maybe you've started to see it get a lot better. You know, I find <clears throat> to some extent it depends how long you've been in an energy crisis and in a rut. Sometimes that can really determine how long it's going to take you to get back. So take heart. If you haven't gotten all the way back to where you want to be yet, it might just take you some more time. And you might need to put these steps in practice for longer than the three weeks. And you might need longer than the three weeks to even get to where you're, where you're going. So in week two last week, you, we ditched sugar. We got rid of sugar. And I bet you, because you're eating less sugar, your cravings are already getting much better and you diminished caffeine and alcohol. And if you've done these steps, good for you. And from week one, you're still drinking a protein shake and taking your supplements. The supplements can be such an important part of bringing your energy back. And you're eating every three to four hours and you're eating on good proteins, good carbs, good fats. I am saying you're doing all this, right? But you might be saying to yourself, well, Dr. Jen, I'm not quite doing it. I can't quite get all of this stuff that you've told me to do because it's a lot. It's a big change for me. And you know what? I get it. And I'm not saying that this all has to be done at once. I'm not saying it all has to be done in three weeks. You take the steps that you can take, at least work with the easiest ones first, and then maybe the ones that are harder for you, you tackle later. So maybe the program doesn't take you three weeks. Maybe it takes you three months, but that's okay. You've got to move at your own pace and that's okay. It will still work. It may just take you a little longer to get there, but that's okay. As long as you're changing slowly, habit by habit, that's what you need to do. You need to just keep put, putting one foot in front of the other, going in the right direction, 
And every time you make one change, it's going to make a little make it a little easier to make the next change. So go easy on yourself. Don't go hard on yourself if you haven't been able to do everything that I've asked you to do. And now it's time to drop gluten and dairy, your final D step out of the five. So dropping gluten and dairy, I know you might be saying to yourself right now, Dr. Jen, are you cray cray? Now, if you don't speak 12 year old girl, that's my daughter Lexi's expression, cray cray, for are you crazy? I know it sounds crazy to ask you to drop gluten and dairy, especially after all the other stuff that I've asked you to do. I know that this one's a big one. The good news is that I've done this myself personally. I've dropped gluten and dairy, and I've been living without it in my diet for about a year and a half now. And it was ever since, really, that I was having trouble losing weight. And my friend JJ Virgin, who is all about dropping seven foods to lose seven pounds in seven days, told me, well, why don't you just do my diet? Why don't you just at least give up gluten and dairy? And I said, oh, fine, what would it hurt? I'll give it a try. And that's when I realized, well, it wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. Um, and the good news is though, over the last year and a half, I have figured out so many different ways to stay gluten and dairy free and to make it easy on myself, even when I'm eating out, even when I'm traveling, I've got swaps so that I can still eat my favorite foods, I'm not missing anything. And I've got recipes, and I'm going to share all of these with you. My favorite swaps, my favorite recipes to make it easy for you. So don't fear, and no, I'm not cray cray. You're going to be able to do this. So let's review briefly crash. Remember, crash are the hidden physical stressors on your body, the reasons why you're crashing. So the C in crash is for cortisol overload and depletion. Remember, cortisol is like the Goldilocks hormone. We don't, don't want to have too much, and we don't want to have too little. The R in crash is for reactions, food reactions and food sensitivities. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. There's a difference between food sensitivities and food allergies. If you're thinking to yourself, oh, I don't have any food allergies, I'm going to talk to you about the difference in just a sec. And remember, the A in crash is for adrenal toxins, and we got rid of those last week. We started to ditch sugar and diminish alcohol and caffeine, so those are your adrenal toxins. Then S, the sugar roller coaster. The S in crash is sugar roller coaster, and you've been working on that since the beginning. Just eating every three to four hours, making sure you get a good breakfast in, and then the balance of foods I've taught you to eat, and then ditching sugar. We've been working on the sugar roller coaster the whole time because that is one of the really important factors for getting your energy back. And then H, everything that you're doing, all five steps of, of the five Ds are engineered towards helping you get your hormones back on track because once you're not putting such a high demand on your adrenals for cortisol, then your body's gonna be able to have leftover ability to make progesterone, which is your calming hormone, helps you get to sleep, helps you feel less overwhelmed, helps your mood, your memory, and testosterone. Testosterone helps your energy, your mood, your memory, your sex drive, and helps you feel more muscular, helps you get more toned, lose more fat. We need more of these hormones, and when our body's too busy making cortisol, we don't get, get them. So that's what our whole program is engineered to do. And those were the five parts of crash, which are the reason, the hidden physical stressors that are causing you to crash. So now we're gonna go to concentrate on that R in crash, the reactions. So I told you, you don't have to be allergic to a food to be sensitive to a food, because there's a difference between a food allergy and a food sensitivity. So here's the difference. A food allergy is like my lips blow up when I eat strawberries or when I eat shellfish, I can't breathe and I need to go to the hospital or I need to have an EpiPen or I need at least some Benadryl. All of those things are allergies. They're immediate reactions that happen right away. Food sensitivities, on the other hand, are reactions that can take several days to have an effect. So there's almost no way to connect the food that you ate with the reaction that you have. So in week three here, we're gonna drop gluten and dairy because gluten and dairy are two of the foods that I find people are the most sensitive to. 
And now you see that word inflammation on the slide. That's what these food sensitivities cause. They start to cause something called gut inflammation. And the gut inflammation and fighting the gut inflammation is what's zapping your energy. So before you say it's too hard and I can't possibly do it, I want you to know it can totally do wonders for your energy. So I told you that I got off gluten and dairy mainly because I wanted to lose weight. And JJ Virgin told me to do it and she's very convincing and very motivating so I did it. And you know what? Sure enough, within just a couple of weeks, maybe a month or two, I dropped, it was only five pounds now, I don't want to be dramatic, but you know what? On my 5'1 frame, five pounds can be a lot. Five pounds can be the difference between fitting in my clothes and not fitting in my clothes. And you know how crappy it is when you feel like you don't fit in your clothes. So I lost that five pounds. And you know what? I had less swelling than I'd ever had before because I used to get ankle swelling like ever since I had my kids, I guess. I had less swelling and I had better energy. And I'll tell you, the time when I really noticed it the most was that motorcycle trip that I showed you the picture of. We were one of the days on the motorcycle trip. Now, I will, I will confess, I did some cheating last summer. When we went to Spain, we went to France, I said, how can I not eat the bread, the croissants, the butter, the cheeses, oh my goodness. So I had myself a good old time and I was letting myself eat whatever I wanted. I was like, I'm on vacation. I'm partying it up. I was having alcohol at night and every time we had coffee stops twice a day and even coffee at lunch sometimes. I got a coffee every time because I was exhausted. And there was this one day on the motorcycle, which I will never forget, I was making Adam stop every hour because I was so exhausted and I needed to take my helmet off and literally smack my face, have a shot of espresso and keep going. And I felt like I was literally gonna fall off the bike. I was telling Adam, I don't know how I'm gonna stay up. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I can't deal. And looking back, it was the gluten and dairy. Because the minute I got home and got back off gluten and dairy, my normal energy was back. I was back to my normal self. I guess it was not only the gluten and dairy, it was also the larger amount of alcohol and the larger amount of caffeine. But it really proved to myself that my program works and I've got to stay on it. And so I wanted you to know that story. And here I want to share another patient's story with you, another person's story with you, because you know what, you might say to yourself, oh, fine, Dr. Jen, you can do it, JJ Virgin can do it, but real people, normal people can't do this. And I will tell you, I have walked hundreds of my patients through this program. And that's how I know it doesn't only work for just me, it works for them too. And this is one patient, Julie. This is one of my patients in my office who was, I will tell you, quite hesitant about going gluten and dairy free. So here's her story. Let's listen to Julie. Hi, my name's Julie Fernandez and I'm from Orlando, Florida. And I want to tell you a little story about my uh, relationship with Dr. Jennifer Landa and Body Logic MD. Um, my last visit with Dr. Uh, Landa six months ago, she begged me to change my diet. She begged me to um, make some changes that would make a huge impact in my energy levels, in my joint pain from rheumatoid arthritis, from um, my weight loss, you know, and I did. I, I did what she asked me to do and the results have been astonishing. So I have been drinking an energy drink in the morning. I have dined on less processed foods and I have dropped all gluten and dairy from my diet and it is not as difficult as you think it would be. And I have lost weight. I have improved the quality of my skin. I have more energy than I know what to do with most of the time. And I am no longer suffering from joint pain. So I just want to know, let you let let you know that the you can improve your quality of life by making a couple of simple changes to your diet, like I did. Isn't that awesome? I'm so proud of Julie and what she was able to do. It's just so amazing to hear her echo the words of so many people who've been able to do the same thing. And I'll tell you, she was very hesitant. She was not about to do it. 
And it wasn't really, I'd had her on supplements for a while and they were helping her. They helped her probably get to the point where she was able to maybe make these changes, but she, she wasn't able to go gluten and dairy free for a long time. And finally, when she put all those changes into place together, she did so amazingly well. And I'm so proud of you, Julie. Yay. <laughs> and so many of my other patients that have been able to make these changes and been successful. And I'm so proud of you that you're here and you're making these changes. And I know that you're going to be successful too. So let me explain to you a little bit more about the science behind why this works. So I started to talk about gut inflammation before I showed you Julie's story. And what gut inflammation is, when, you're, when, you're, uh, when your gut is sensitive to a certain food, it will start to release inflammatory chemicals. That's what your body does when it's kind of under attack, basically. And cortisol is basically the water that needs to come put out the fire of inflammation. So think of inflammation at your gut lining because of these foods that you're sensitive to. Think of the inflammation as a fire and cortisol is the water that has to come in and put out the fire. So basically, gut inflammation drains your cortisol and it zaps your energy because your body is fighting cortisol, fighting with cortisol, it's fighting the inflammation with cortisol, and that's taking away cortisol that you need for energy. So that's why it's another hidden physical stressor that you can pretty easily get rid of. And the other problem is, the gut is what controls what comes into our body and what stays out of our body, right? And what happens when you get this inflammation is that the gut can become leaky and it can start to let things in that it shouldn't. The barrier becomes leaky, basically. And <clears throat> the immune system is what's right behind that barrier because if you were trying to defend your country, you would put the army at the barrier, right? And so that's your immune system is right there at the gut barrier to try to defend against foreign invaders. What happens when we eat foods that we're sensitive to, the immune system gets kind of ticked off and it starts to make all kinds of antibodies to foods that either that it shouldn't or that it recognizes for some reason as foreign or that it's sensitive to. And that's a really big part of this upswing that we're seeing in autoimmune disease. And that's exactly what Julie was talking about in her example. She has rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune disease. There are over 84 immune immune uh, autoimmune diseases right now that are affecting us and they affect women a lot more than men so I know that some of you that I'm talking to out there right now have either rheumatoid arthritis multiple sclerosis um, lupus there's all these different autoimmune diseases and even autoimmune thyroid autoimmune thyroid is the most common Hashimoto's and that can be part of this problem too so anybody with autoimmune disease I totally recommend that they have to give up gluten and dairy would help a lot too. But did you hear Julie's joint pain went away instead of being on rheumatoid arthritis drugs? It's unbelievable what can what you can do. So you might be saying to yourself, well, okay, fine, Dr. Jen, but I don't have an autoimmune disease. And so what are some of the symptoms of having a food sensitivity? How do I know if I have a food sensitivity? Well, here are some of the common symptoms if your gut is showing any symptoms. Now, I'll show you in a second that your gut doesn't have to show symptoms, but if you feel bloated after you eat, bloated more as you go through on, the, on through the day, if you're belching a lot, if you either have diarrhea or constipation. I had this one woman in my practice who had such bad diarrhea, she could literally could not leave her house. It was awful, and she developed anxiety, because she never knew when she was going to have to have an explosive bowel movement. And then she developed depression because she couldn't go anywhere. And then she was thin as a stick because she was deathly afraid of eating anything. So it was creating almost an eating disorder in her. Her entire life was a wreck. This woman, her name was Donna, went off gluten at my recommendation. And I put her on some supplements to help heal her gut because she was in a really bad way with her gut. And it was unbelievable. Within a month, she had complete control over her bowels. She had loose stools once in a while, but she was able to control it. The anxiety was recovering. The depression was lifting. 
And she just couldn't believe what a gluten-free diet was able to do for her and a dairy-free diet. She was both gluten and dairy-free. So if you've got any gut trouble whatsoever, believe me, this is a huge solution for you. But I already hinted at this, that it can cause so many other things, food sensitivities can cause reactions throughout the body. And it's because of that reaction with the immune system and then those immune complexes can go throughout the body anywhere. So <clears throat> for example, I mentioned to you JJ Virgin. JJ talks all about when she was a kid, she had terrible acne. And even into her young adulthood, it was years and years and years, it was such bad acne that she was afraid to go out of her house. She was embarrassed to be seen in public. She had constantly had heavy makeup on. She would, couldn't go to the gym practically, and she's a big gym, gym person, and because the makeup would be smearing all over the place. It was a terrible way to live, and she figured out it was dairy that was causing her acne. I've had countless patients, one particular patient actually that sticks in mind, um, Michelle, she was scheduled to go for sinus surgery in just two months' time. And I said, Michelle, give me six weeks go dairy free and see what happens and believe it or not of course from what i'm telling you she stopped dairy and her sinus congestion cleared and she was able to cancel the sinus surgery so it is just amazing what food sensitivities are doing to us in all different parts in our body and i told you for me it helped with weight it helped with energy and it helped with swelling for julie it helped with joint pain I've seen it help with countless people with skin rashes, all kinds of things. It's unbelievable what these food sensitivities are doing to us. So the best way to know if you have a food sensitivity is to eliminate the food and see how you feel. So now let's get to the nitty gritty of cutting out gluten and dairy. I know, I'm sure you're still scared, but I'm telling you, I'm gonna tell you ways to make it easy, my favorite swaps, recipes, and we're gonna go through it all right now. And I'm also gonna help give you some hints as to where these foods are hiding. You know, before we get into that, let me just say, so I know a lot of people might be saying to themselves out there, you know what, Dr. Jen, this is just the latest fad. You know, Gwyneth Paltrow's going, gluten-free and Zoe Deschanel is going gluten-free and it, this is just a fad this is like the grapefruit diet but I am here to tell you that this is not like the grapefruit diet this has hardcore science behind it there are tons of scientists that are telling us that this is where it's going and this is where it's been going and the other part of you might be saying Dr. Jim we've been eating foods like gluten and dairy for years you know, now I have to get into a little bit what gluten and dairy exactly are, but gluten is basically found in bread. And you're probably saying to yourself, Dr. Chen, we've been eating bread for hundreds of years. But the fact is that the bread we're eating now is not our grandmother's bread. It is not the same. Since about World War II, there has been a huge revolution in food. So that's only about 70 years, let's say. And there's been this huge evolution and revolution in food and it's an industrialization of food and the food industry has figured out how to make things cheaper faster and unfortunately in the process less healthy for us by adding ingredients that they can get cheaply and by adding ingredients all kinds of ingredients to food that were never in them before and by making essentially new categories of food that never existed before. But I know your grandmother drank milk from cows, ate bread, but I'm telling you, it's not the same stuff we have today. Their milk didn't have hormones in it. It didn't have antibiotics in it. All of these different things that we experience. And even if you get the organic milk, the problem is that milk products are in so many, hiding in so many different foods that we are literally being exposed to dairy and gluten, and gluten hides in so many different foods. You're gonna be shocked when I show you some of them. It These things hide in so many different foods that we are constantly ingesting them all day long. So it's not like our grandmothers, when they had a piece of bread, they had a piece of bread, or when they had a glass of milk, they had a glass of milk. No, we're getting this stuff in processed food all day long. And we're gonna play a little game in a few minutes and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So where do you most commonly find gluten? So I already gave you a tip, bread. So gluten is actually a protein that exists in basically wheat. 
It's in wheat flour, but it's also in white flour. People get confused about that sometimes. And it's in a whole bunch of other types of grains too, which I'm gonna show you in just a sec. So it's in grains like barley, so it's in beer. Gluten hides in a lot of different places. And it's this gluten protein that most, that the people who are sensitive are sensitive to. And it's estimated that more than 50% of our society is sensitive to gluten. So you very well may be one of them. So here are the big offenders, things like bread, crackers, cookies, cakes, pasta, muffins, but some of them that you wouldn't expect, right? Soy sauce, gluten, yeah. Soy sauce is actually made with wheat gluten. Now you can get gluten-free soy sauce and there's a lot more gluten-free products coming out these days, which I have a little something to say about in just a sec, but gluten hides in the craziest of places. It hides in candy and gum. It hides in French fries really commonly, processed lunch meat, all kinds of things. So you've always got to read the labels. So you're ready? Here we go. We're gonna play the gluten game. I've got some common, common items from the supermarket. One of my friends ran into me with a full cart of this stuff at my supermarket and she said, Jen, what are you doing? You're buying all this crazy processed food? Oh, I said, oh, don't worry. I'm doing it for a webinar because I've got to prove a point here. I got to show you that gluten is hiding everywhere that you wouldn't expect. All right, so here's one of my, my children's favorites. They love these things. And I never realized before that they actually have gluten in them. Who would have known? And not only that, Enriched wheat flour is the second ingredient after corn syrup, of course. Now, granted, you're already not supposed to eat this because of everything I've told you about sugar. But if I analyze the label, there's 17 grams of sugar in four pieces. So if you only ate two pieces, then theoretically you could get around my sugar thing, right? Or even if you only ate one piece, maybe, because you'd have to divide the 17 by four, which I'm not really that good at really quick math, so I don't know, it's probably about four, yeah, it's about four grams of sugar. So that would fall under my six grams. So theoretically you could eat your one Twizzlers, but they've got enriched, enriched wheat flour. All right, so how about the next one? So we're gonna, I told you it was gonna be a game. So it's a yes or no game. So I want you to play along with me. How about these? Pringles potato chips. Do they have any gluten hiding in them? Should we get the Pringles potato chips? It's potato after all, and potatoes don't have any gluten in them. So, what do you think? Think we should eat them? Maybe? Nah, no. <laughs> They've got gluten in them. The, it says right on here, contains wheat ingredients. And one of the ingredients is wheat starch. It's right on the list, right there on the label. So you've gotta read these labels. We're gonna keep playing the game. This one shocked some of my friends that I was telling about this. How about this? Mustard, hot mustard. That shouldn't have gluten in it, right? Eh, again, mustard and ketchup can commonly have wheat flour. Now the good news is a lot of the big brands like Heinz and Hunt's have already caught on to this stuff. And they've stopped using malt vinegar, which also would add gluten. But this particular brand still had wheat flour right in, right in the mustard. Strange, right? So what else? How about this beef gravy? Beef gravy. It has gluten in it. It has wheat right in it. Crazy. And one more, chili. You would think, chili, it's meat. Dr. Jen told me to eat meat, that's great. Nope, they added gluten to it. It's unbelievable, but us consumers, we have to send a message to these people who are making our food and show them that we don't want this gluten and it's hiding everywhere. And that's why I really encourage you to get away from what I'd like to call poorly processed foods. Um, because they have this gluten hiding in it. Oh, and yeah, so basically anything that contains wheat has gluten, but that doesn't mean that if you eat white bread, you're safe, that has gluten too. Bulgur spelt. I never knew what spelt was, and I thought maybe spelt was gluten-free, but it's not. 
um, farina, couscous, you know, even little pasta has gluten. So you've got to check out where gluten hides in the Endless Energy Guide. We have a guide for you in, in the Endless Energy membership site to tell you all about where gluten might be hiding and how you can look for it. So you've really just got to start reading those labels and ruling it out. But if you're a huge bread fan and carb fan, just at least start getting rid of the bread first. So these, the good news is, there are things you can eat. So here are some of the things you can eat. These are grains that you can eat. So you can still, yes, have bread. You can still have pancakes. You can still have waffles. So I make my kids the greatest pancakes out of almond flour, or sometimes I even buy them ready-made waffles. They make buckwheat waffles, ready-made. The company Vans makes them. And so there are definitely things that you can still get away with and you can still eat your favorite foods. You don't have to give up pasta. You don't have to give up bread. And I'm going to tell you some of my favorite swaps for those foods in just a few minutes. So we've talked about now, we've talked about food reactions and the role that they play in losing your energy. We've talked about the food sensitivities and inflammation and leaky gut and what that can do to us. You've seen my patient, Julie, who said that it's not so hard to give up gluten and dairy. And now we've talked about gluten. We've talked about where gluten's hiding, and we've talked about what foods you can eat, even when you're trying to follow a gluten-free diet. And next, we're gonna go on to talk about spending money on gluten-free foods, okay? <clears throat> Now, a lot of people tell me, when I tell them they need to go gluten-free, they tell me, Dr. Jen, I can't go gluten-free, it's too expensive. There's no way I can buy all that food. Or I tell people to go gluten-free and they get all excited and they go, go home and they spend $300 in the supermarket buying every gluten-free food they can find. All right. <laughs> now, you do that, but, but, but what does that get you? That still gets you a bunch of processed foods. And now they've gotten rid of the gluten in it, but number one, they might not have gotten rid of the dairy in it. And number two, they put all kinds of other things in it. They want it to taste like you expect it to taste, right? So they've got to put all kinds of other things in it, like sugar, like extra fats that aren't good, soybean oil, all kinds of things that aren't good for you. So it's still poorly processed food. And the bottom line is a cookie is still a cookie. Just because it's a gluten-free cookie doesn't make it any more healthy for you. So I really want you to focus your efforts on foods that have always been gluten-free. They don't need a gluten-free label. Things like lean meats, the things on your food list, lean meats, chicken, turkey, fish, lean pork, all of that, no gluten, never had it, never will. Fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, nuts, seeds, all of these things, none of them have ever had gluten in them, never will, don't need it, don't need to worry about it, and you don't need to spend extra money on gluten-free foods. So just keep in mind, that's a lot of marketing hype, and you don't need to buy into it, and I, and I don't want you to, and it's really just the food industry again, kind of out to figure out how they can market to us, how they can sell to us, and where they can profit. And don't, don't let them do that to you. So now, so we've talked all about gluten, where it hides, where, what foods you can eat, and how you don't need to spend tons of money on gluten-free food. And now we're going to move on to talk about dairy. So where do you most commonly, so really dairy, I just want to remind you, we've talked about the reactions that we talked about, all of this inflammation that can cause all of these different symptoms. Remember I told you about the woman who avoided sinus surgery, Michelle, because she gave up dairy. And I told you about um, the woman who gave up dairy and her diarrhea went away and she gave up gluten and dairy, but her, her diarrhea went away. You know what? When I gave up diarrhea, I used to, I mean, when I gave up, <laughs> sorry about that. Whoops. When I gave up dairy, <clears throat> um, I, I found that I was able to keep my weight off and keep my energy up. And that was a combination of gluten and dairy. So remember you might have your own symptoms and your own, oh, and remember JJ and her acne. So there's all different kinds of things that can be related. By the way, rosacea is a big one I see too with dairy. So if you've got, if you've got rosacea, you've got to give up dairy. You've got to check it out, what it can do for you. So where will you most commonly find dairy? 
So when I talk about dairy, I don't mean eggs because a lot of people think that that includes eggs because, I don't know, the government somehow lumped eggs into dairy when they did the food pyramids and stuff. But no, I think um, eggs are a separate category. I'm not telling you to stay away from eggs at this point. I'm telling you really to get rid of things that come from cow's milk. So I'm mainly talking about cheese, yogurt, cottage cheese, all of these things. Now, I know you might be saying to yourself, yogurt, cottage cheese, are you kidding? These foods are supposed to be health foods. But there is a ton of science out there that eating dairy increases, actually increases our risk of heart disease and cancer. So they are not health foods. And it's really, I hate to say it, but it's really the Dairy Council, or I shouldn't hate to say it, because it's really true. It's really all marketing again. It's the Dairy Council with those great mustache ads that says milk does a body good that has convinced us all, including even our doctors, our whole generation, that milk is good for us. But who told us that other than the Dairy Council? Nobody. It doesn't even make any sense that we would be drinking milk from another species. Basically, the bottom line is that we only need milk in the first year of our life, life, and our mother's milk is the best milk by far, bar none. And cow's milk is nowhere near the same and isn't as healthy for us as people think it is. And it can cause all of these food sensitivities and reactions that I've been talking about, and it can zap your energy and cause you to put on weight. Can't tell you the amount, the number of people that I've had get off just creamer in their coffee. That was the only milk they were doing. They get off creamer in their coffee and within a few weeks they lose 10 pounds. So try me, try it out. So where is dairy hiding? We're gonna play the dairy hiding game now and you're gonna tell me if the food has dairy in it or not. All right, so this one might be kinda obvious, but how about, but the thing that I think is interesting about it is this is Annie's natural brand. So we think Annie's Natural, we find it in the health food store or in the health food aisle. We think that this stuff is good for us. Of course it wouldn't have gluten or dairy. Well, it doesn't have gluten, but my friends, it does have dairy. And it doesn't say anything about it on the front. And on the back though, it says in pretty big letters, probably can't see this, but contains milk and egg ingredients because it gives you, because the companies are starting to list this information now because it's allergy information and so many people are developing weed allergies and milk allergies they're putting this information on the back so how about these popped rice snacks so we think oh rice it's gluten free this is this has got to be better for me it's got milk in it again not good for us this one you would not think now of course you know i'm not recommending you eat funyuns anyway but i was pretty shocked funyuns have milk in them and finally i've got an really these two i found really interesting these whoops upside down these are gluten-free cookies so they're gluten-free but that doesn't mean that they're dairy free not at all and just because it came from a health food store doesn't mean it's good for you. Just four of these cookies has 13 grams of sugar. And that might be more than, you know, that's, that's double what I want you to eat. And you might consider eating more than two if you took out these wafers and if they tasted pretty good. I don't know. I haven't even opened the package to tell you the truth because they have dairy in them. And finally, remember I told you that, um, or maybe, you know what? I haven't told you this yet. Let me tell you about one of the things about dairy that I think is so amazing is that it's made of these different components. So a lot of people think, well, if I go lactose free, well, number one, people think if I don't have a problem with lactose, you know, if I don't have diarrhea or gas, I don't have to give up dairy. This is not the same at all. Lactose is just one component of dairy. There are other components though, casein and whey. Now, most people don't tend to be too sensitive to whey, but they could be. So that's something you need to look for on labels. But casein is something that you really need to look for on the labels. And casein is really interesting. What they have in dairy products, which makes them so addictive. If you're sitting here right now going, Dr. Jen, you want to take my cheese and my milk? Are you kidding me? Are you cray cray? as my 12 year old would say. And that might be because you're addicted to it. 
believe it or not, there's a substance in cheese called caseomorphins. Morphin coming from morphine. Morphine is the stuff in heroin that makes it addictive. It's the most addictive substance on the earth probably, right? And that is why people become so addicted to cheese. I used to call cheese, my kids were so addicted to cheese, I used to call it kitty crack. And so in my search for some other cheese for them to eat, this was one of the things that I came across. Go veggie. It's in the health food section of my supermarket and it's also sold in the health food store. And you would think that go veggie, you would think this is healthy stuff. And it says lactose free on it. And you, so you would think it, and then when you read it, it says cheese food alternative. And then you read gluten free. So it's lactose free, it's gluten free, it's go veggie. The marketing is awesome. Then it says right under it contains casein and soy in small letters. Now, anybody who doesn't know what casein is, which is milk, wouldn't realize that this is not a dairy-free cheese, not by far. And then when you read the back, the first ingredient's water and the very second ingredient is casein. And right next to casein, it says milk protein. So at least if you were reading the label, you would know. And you know what? I totally got fooled by this one. I brought this home for my kids for months before I realized but it still had kitty crack in it. And then I had to slowly wean them off that one too. So that it just goes to show you where dairy hides. And it's so important that you go check out your Endless Energy Guide in your membership site for the places where dairy hides because it is in everything. So what about some things you can eat? I told you, you don't have to go without your favorites, so you don't have to go without milk because there's lots of different options out there. My favorite is unsweetened coconut milk but you could also go for unsweetened almond milk and there's unsweetened hemp milk. There's so many different types of nut milk that is amazing out there that you that you need to try because it's so good. And and they make other, other um, categories of products too. They make even a creamer for your coffee. It's got some extra sugar in it, so I'm not a big fan of it and I don't like you to drink too much coffee anyway, so I want you to cut down on that. Um, and there is a dairy-free cheese substitute, the one listed up there. So finally, I, in, in terms of dairy, so we've gone over dairy, the reactions it can cause. We've gone over where dairy hides in a ton of places and what things, some of the things that you can have instead. And I've got in my guide to dairy, I've got much more information on other things that you can have instead of dairy, and I'm gonna go through some of my swaps, my favorite swaps in just a minute. So I'm not gonna leave you hanging. There are still things that you can have to have your favorite foods, and you don't have to go without. So finally, off gluten and dairy, you're gonna feel awesome, just like Julie did, just like I do. You're gonna be able to lose weight, you're gonna have more energy, you're gonna be more clear-headed. If you've got joint pain, it'll probably go away. Your thyroid might even improve if you've got Hashimoto's thyroiditis. It's pretty amazing. Rashes can go away. It's amazing, really, what going off gluten and dairy can do. So you've just got to give it a shot. So here's the swaps. I promised I wouldn't leave you hanging. So cheese. So I order lots of salads, like when I go to restaurants, and lots of times they want to put cheese on it, like feta cheese or blue cheese or whatever. And I ask them, instead of the cheese, can you please bring me some avocado? Most places have it. Avocado is like an amazing wonder food. It's got the great fat. It's got that creamy texture to it. So many people have been like with me at a restaurant, see me do it, and they're like, oh, I'm gonna do that too, Jen. That sounds good. And so I want you to try that out. And then if I'm really craving some cheese, you know what I make? I make this amazing cashew cheese. I know it sounds totally weird, but there are so many things that you can make seem like dairy when you make them out of nuts. And cashews are a really versatile option. I've learned to do great things with them. And I'm gonna send you all of my recipes so that you don't have to get left behind. I make an amazing strawberry sauce for my kids' pancakes with cashews. As crazy as it sounds, it's awesome. Um, yogurt, so delicious. That brand I showed you, that milk, they also make what they call cultured coconut. It's basically yogurt and it's awesome. My kids even like it. That tells you it's really good. Pudding. I told you before how I am a huge pudding and whipped cream addict. 
well, there was no way I was going to go out without my pudding or my whipped cream. So I learned really from vegan chefs, the vegans have figured out how to go dairy free and how to still enjoy life. And so from a vegan chef, Cynthia Pasquella, she's amazing. In her cookbook, I found out how to make um, dairy free pudding. And really all you have to do is Google vegan pudding, but I'm going to give you, of course, I'm going to give you my recipe that I use for it. And the vegan pudding, it's made with yet again, avocado, one of my favorites. And coconut cream is how I make my whipped cream now. Coconut cream and a little low hung guo, whip it up and you're good to go. I put a little vanilla in there too, natural vanilla extract, and it's amazing. So I can still enjoy my chocolate pudding and my whipped cream without stressing about the dairy and without consuming dairy, which I swear was keeping the weight on me. It's so amazing. So what about gluten? Maybe you're a big noodle lover. So I found this amazing option. I went to this um, this great vegan restaurant, actually, raw vegan restaurant. And I learned, they. I ordered this pad thai and it was just unbelievable. And I learned that the noodles were made from zucchini. So you can make noodles from zucchini by buying something called a spiralizer. It's just like 20 bucks on Amazon. And then you stick the zucchini on it and you twist it, you turn it. It's so much fun. My daughter loves to do it with me. So we make our zucchini noodles. And because she has fun making it, then she wants to eat it. And I make this amazing pad thai, which I'm totally going to share the recipe with for that too. Another great option, we use spaghetti squash instead of spaghetti. And we, make, we put meatballs and red sauce and the whole thing. And we do it with spaghetti squash. The... Um, the other thing you can use is shirataki noodles, those miracle noodles. Those are gluten-free and you can try those too. And then this is one of the exceptions where I would say gluten-free, buying something that says gluten-free on the box is okay. I like the quinoa pasta. I really like quinoa altogether as something that I use as a staple in my diet. Instead of I use it instead of rice, I use it instead of pasta. I think quinoa is an excellent um, an excellent kind of grain substitute. It's amazing. So next I have a rice swap. Now I just told you rice is gluten free. So why do you need a rice swap? Well, because rice is really high in carbohydrates that transfer switch to sugar pretty quickly. So you can't have a lot of rice. I told you you can only have a little bit of rice. But one way you can have a lot of rice and not regret it in any way is cauliflower rice. And it's the easiest thing to make in the world. Just Google cauliflower rice and you'll have a zillion recipes for it. It's easy to do, really, really simple. And I love it under like zesty foods like Mexican, Indian, Thai food, anything that you're normally, traditionally, you have rice with. I have cauliflower rice and it's amazing. And my favorite, bread swap. So when I am craving bread, and my daughter tries to be pretty gluten-free with me too, and when she and I are craving bread on the weekends, we make our muffin in a minute. It's the it's similar to the low carb, um, you know. It showed up on all the low carb websites. The muffin in a minute, and I make mine with almond flour, flaxseed, coconut oil, and of course, I'm going to give you the recipe. And it tastes amazing. And then I put my strawberry sauce on it, and it is delectable. So you do not have to give up good food when you're going gluten and dairy free. I promise and I swear, <laughs> I've been actually loving it. So this week, another thing that I'd really like you to do is I'd really like you to start a probiotic. You've probably been hearing a little bit about probiotics out there. Probiotics are the good bacteria that we need in our gut. It sounds totally gross, but our gut has got about a trillion or maybe multiple trillions of bacteria in it that help keep us healthy. <clears throat> but some of the gut bacteria is good bacteria and some of it's bad bacteria. The bottom line is when there isn't enough good bacteria, the bad bacteria can overwhelm the good guys and you can wind up having gut issues. And one of the big gut issues that bad bacteria can cause is you got it, gut inflammation, which again requires your cortisol, drains your cortisol, zaps your energy reserves. So probiotics are another great way to help you get gut inflammation under control and to bring your energy back. There are so many doctors who talk about the fact that health really just starts in the gut. And this is one of the fundamental ways to bring your gut health back. Now, I know you're thinking to yourself, well, Dr. Jen, I used to eat yogurt and that was my probiotics. That was my good bacteria. But 
you know what? I don't think that most of the probiotics in yogurt are really the most beneficial strains and there's not necessarily enough of it. So in my opinion, you do better eating and taking it as a pill, as a capsule. And, um, and it's really important when you do take probiotics that you take a probiotic from a really reputable company because unfortunately, a lot of companies talk about they have you know 20 billion, 50 billion probiotics in their capsule, but that's when it leaves the factory. What about when it gets to your door? What about when it's in your pantry and you're taking it? You wanna make sure those good guys are, are alive and well. And you might be saying to yourself, well, I don't have gut problems. I don't, I don't need this. But you know what? Anybody who's ever been on antibiotics ever has had their good gut flora wiped out. Because antibiotics, they don't only kill what you're trying to kill, the virus, the bacteria, really, not virus. You're trying to kill a bacteria, right? You have a strep infection or whatever. You're trying to kill that. But you also wind up killing a lot of the good flora in your body, which is why so many women get yeast infections from going on an antibiotic because you killed off the good flora in the vagina. And the same with your gut. It's got good guys and it's got bad guys. And when you kill off the good guys and the bad guys, the good guys can't reestablish themselves so easily. It's not easy for them to do. So really we, it sounds crazy, but we really should probably take probiotics as a staple every day for the rest of our lives to keep our inflammation down and to keep us healthy because our gut is involved in so many different processes in the body. I told you the immune system is there. We also call the gut the second brain because the gut makes some of our brain chemicals that we need to stay happy and to stay calm. So we've really got to fix the gut. It's an important, important thing to do. A high quality option, I told you you have to be careful with the quality, is available at my website, at my web store. I have come out with a probiotic here that is awesome. It's amazing technology that makes sure that what they put in the sphere is what you're gonna, the same amount of probiotic that they say on the bottle is what's gonna hit your belly and help take care of your good gut flora. So we've talked about, we've talked about gluten, we've talked about dairy, we've talked about that's food reactions all together and how those food reactions might be zapping your energy. So we've covered the fifth D drop. And then we just talked about adding a probiotic, which could be helpful for you. And now we're gonna go on to talk about what about, what happens beyond this three weeks? What do I want you to do next? So number one, I want you to try as much as possible to make this program, the five Ds, another D, your default setting. I tell people, you know what, if you give me 335 days a year, if you give me kind of all your normal, typical days, not your holidays, not your birthdays, not your anniversaries, not your vacation, if you give me just your typical normal days, I'll give you like 30, 35 days a year, just give me the other 330 and make this your default setting. I always say to my kids, you know, on vacation, we do relax a little bit, we take it easy a little bit. I told you that story about Spain <coughs> and how I got so exhausted. And, um, and so I do lack, loosen things up a little bit when we go on vacation, but right on the plane, on the way home, I'm always telling the kids, it's time to get back on our program, it's time to detox, get rid of all the bad stuff, yet another D word, and it's time to get back to our default setting. So I really want you to make this your default setting, wherever possible. So um, I wanna talk to you about a three-week elimination. So I know I told you gluten and dairy, just drop it for a week, but truly, to get the best idea of whether or not you're sensitive to gluten and dairy, you really need to try to cut it out for an entire three weeks. So now you've got all the recipes, all the swaps, all the tips, all the strategies. It's not going to be hard to do. I would really recommend that you get rid of the gluten and dairy from your pantry. Donate it to a friend. Donate it to a charity. But get rid of it because if it's there, you're going to be tempted. You're going to want to eat it. And, um, and you might not want to go out as much until you understand what you can order when you go out. Or simply, many restaurants nowadays, you can ask for a gluten-free menu. You can ask for a dairy-free menu. And when you have foods, just, you know, simple grilled fish, simple, simple steamed vegetables, it's really easy, actually, to avoid gluten and dairy. It's not hard. 
So do this for three weeks. That's what I'd really like to see you do. And then after the three weeks, then I want you to reintroduce dairy. I want you to reintroduce it by eating it for two days, two to three times, two to three times a day for two to three days, basically. So eat a lot of it, pretty much. And what I want you to test is, does any Thing change in your body. All the things we've talked about from skin rashes to acne to weight gain to swelling to just plain old being more tired, being more fatigued, getting your energy zapped. Are any of those things nasal congestion? Remember nasal congestion, stuffiness, and um, and phlegm in your throat. Those are things that might come back too. And if any of those things come back, then you're sensitive to dairy. So check it out. Are you tired, sluggish, bloated? Joint pain is another one, nasal or sinus congestions. If so, stop dairy and the symptoms are gonna likely go away again. And that means you're reactive to dairy, you're sensitive to dairy and you wanna keep it out of your diet. If you had no symptoms at all, then you probably aren't sensitive to dairy and you probably can leave it in your diet. I would still watch labels and make sure you're not overdoing it. Make sure you're not eating food that has dairy in it constantly, 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 because that's what sets you up for a food sensitivity. That's what makes it more likely that you're going to get a food sensitivity. So, and also watch out for the sugar in dairy products because they can have a lot of sugar. Then the next week, you want to try adding back gluten. You do the same thing for two to three days, two to three times a day, you eat gluten products. And then you watch your body. Do you have any gas problems, bloating problems, constipation, diarrhea? And same, by the way, the gas problems, gas bloating, diarrhea for dairy. Are you feeling more tired? Do you feel more inflamed? Do you feel more swollen? Do you gain weight really easily, really quickly? Are you exhausted? Does gluten cause any of those reactions? And if so, yeah, you're gluten sensitive. Just like I said, more than 50% of the population probably is. And if so, you should eliminate it from your diet as best as you possibly can. You should stay away from it. Now, ultimately, you might be able to find that after you stop these foods for at least three months, maybe even six months, you will probably be able to add back a small amount of these foods at a time. And you might be able to find out how much you can tolerate and still be okay. Um, sometimes I find that if I have just a little bite or two of bread or whatever, it's not terrible, you know, so it's not like I never cheat, I never break, I never, you know, do anything. And, you know, so, you know, nobody can expect themselves to be perfect. I'm certainly far from it. So I don't expect you to be perfect either. So remember, you'll never probably get rid of it entirely. And life is always going to be stressful and it can make it really hard to stick to these programs. And I know one of the biggest things that can happen when you get really stressed out is you can start to make excuses. You can start to have all kinds of excuses for why you're not doing what you should be doing. And I know some of these excuses, like, you know, I just can't do it. I just can't. I, you know, who wants to do this? This is ridiculous. This Dr. John is telling me to do this. It's crazy. I don't want to do it. You know what? You have to remember that you make your own reality and you can have what you want. You can have more energy. You can have a more fit body. You can have those abs that I have even at 45 years old and even at 55 or at 65. You can, you know, or beyond. You can feel amazing. And you deserve to feel amazing. And you were the master of your destiny. And you are the one who makes the decision here as to whether you can or you can't. But you can. It's just a matter of will you. And I know you can do it. And I want you to do it. So what about time? I don't have enough time to do it, Dr. Jen. You know, I talked to you about some of my time management issues. We're really just doing too much for other people. So examine your life. Are you doing too much for other people? Are you doing things you don't need to be doing? We're the master of our own schedule as well. So we decide what's a priority. And as my husband always says, he used to say to me, I don't have time to exercise. And I used to say to him, you don't have time, you make time. And you know what? He never used to make time for exercise. And now he makes time for exercise. Luckily, he comes with me when I go to exercise. So I keep up the motivation for both of us. But you don't have time. You make time. 
And you need to make time to make this a priority to get the things that you want out of life, the things that you deserve, the things that I so badly want for you. And your other excuse might be, oh, this is too expensive. There's no way I can do this. You know what? There are all different kinds of ways. I told you, you don't need to go buy a whole bunch of gluten-free food. You can go to a food co-op. Find a food co-op in your area. It's a great resource for local foods, some organic, some just local, but then, you know, you can meet the farmer and they can tell you they don't use pesticides because organic is really expensive to qualify for, which is why organic foods are so expensive. And you don't need to buy organic, just buy local. And um, there's tons of different ways to do this and to save money. You don't need to make it expensive. And really, that's just an excuse. Then maybe you're thinking, I'm going to cheat and I can't do this in her time frame and I can't be perfect like like this. You don't need to. More, more likely than not, the problems that you've got going on right now have been a long time in coming, right? You've been kind of grumping along this way for maybe years. I know I was. My energy crisis lasted for years before I found answers. And you know what? Waiting another three months as you're slowly making changes, even another six months, even if it takes you a whole year to do this three-week program, you're in a year, you're going to be so much better off than you were the year before. So just start taking the steps, put one foot in front of the other, and just start making it happen. I want you to remember crash. Those are these hidden stressors, these hidden physical stressors that are zapping your energy. So there's the C in crash is cortisol. Too much or too little puts us in a bad situation. Too much is when we're burning up. Too little is when we're burning low and burning out. And none of those are good places to be. And I know because I tend to live in a state to some extent of burning up, especially when I'm not doing my relaxation techniques, which I'll talk about in just a sec. Or I can get into the situation of burning low like I was when I was on the back of that bike last year and I felt like I was going to fall off. And some people get to the state of burning out. And that's from cortisol overload and depletion. So that's the C in crash. The R is for reactions, and we've talked a lot about that today. So these food sensitivities that can cause gut inflammation, cause leaky gut, cause reactions throughout the body. Gluten and dairy are the most common foods that you're likely to have a sensitivity to. So those are the ones that I want you to try dropping first. Minimizing adrenal toxins. Keeping sugar down, keeping alcohol down, keeping the uh, caffeine down. Those are the things you want to do to try to minimize those physical stressors. Because remember, those are physical stressors that draw on our cortisol system. The sugar roller coaster is a huge alarm bell for the adrenals. So we want to stay off the sugar roller coaster by eating foods that balance our blood sugar, eating frequently enough to balance our blood sugar. And all of this gets our hormones back on track, our good, yummy hormones like progesterone and testosterone. Progesterone is our calming hormone when we feel overwhelmed. It helps us get to sleep. Testosterone helps improve our energy, our memory, our mood, helps keep our muscle, lose our fat. Who doesn't need more of that? And I want you to continue doing your 5D steps. Your 5D steps of drink a protein shake in the morning and take your supplements. Your next D to dine using the guidelines that you still have in your Endless Energy membership site. So make sure to take those guidelines shopping with you. Plan your recipes around it. Ditch sugar the next D. Ditch sugar and artificial sweeteners. Don't forget about those. The next D is you diminish alcohol and caffeine. Keep those to a minimum. And finally, drop the foods that you have reactions to. Remember, these five Ds were created to help you get over those hidden physical stressors of crash. And when you do this, you will finally have the energy to power through your day. You'll have the energy to have better relationships or to find a relationship, to get ahead at work, to finally drop the weight that you wanted to drop, to finally be able to exercise, get out and feel good about moving your body. 
you're going to finally have the energy to do all of those things and more. What are your goals? What are your big whys? You're going to have the energy to achieve those big whys. And that's what I really want for you. And that's what you so dearly deserve. You absolutely deserve to have the energy to have the things you want in your life. So I know things are going to get stressful and I know there are going to be bumps in the road. So I really strongly want to encourage you to find some relaxation technique that works for you. It could be as simple as deep belly breathing. If you don't know what I mean, put your hand on your belly right now and take a big deep breath with me. Inhale and exhale. Do it again and what I want you to feel, yes, take an inhale. I want you to feel your belly expanding underneath your hand when you inhale and then when you exhale, let it out. I want you to feel your belly contracting back into your body. If that's not what you're feeling, that's what you've got to learn to feel to do belly breathing. And belly breathing is amazing because it actually, it actually calms your sympathetic nervous system. So it actually calms and soothes you. So just when you're stressed out, take 10 deep belly breaths. You, I, I challenge you to feel stressed. You can't feel stressed when you take 10 deep belly breaths. Other things that would be so great, meditation, meditation, yoga, tai chi, qigong, spiritual reading, prayer, all of these things can be such helpful ways to help deal with stress. In terms of guided meditation, I want to just say a word about that before we move on, and yoga. I found this amazing service called yogaglow.com because I really want to develop a yoga practice and I find that I don't have enough time to get to those yoga classes. So yogaglow.com is online yoga classes, basically. Classes anytime you want, classes of any length, from five minutes to over an hour. And they have meditations in there too. They have guided meditations that are just awesome. And that, I will tell you, is really my big challenge point. And that's why when I start burning up, it's because I'm not using enough of my relaxation techniques in my life. I'm not meditating, I'm not doing yoga, I'm letting stress get away with me. And that will start me on that pathway toward burning up. And I don't want that for you. And wherever you are on the scale, burning up, burning low, burning out, these relaxation techniques are going to help you. So one, Google a guided meditation. Just Google the words guided meditation and you'll find tons of them for free online. Just click on the videos. After you Google, Google guided meditation, click on a video. You'll find guided meditations anywhere from three minutes to over an hour. And it's somebody walking you through a relaxing scene, basically. If you're not a meditator or meditation is hard for you, it's a lot easier when it's a guided meditation. And the power of this is just unbelievable. I've gotten my daughter into guided meditation. I put her to bed with a guided meditation every night. And one time we went to the dentist's office and the dentist made the mistake, in my opinion, of telling her that she was gonna get a shot in her mouth because she had to get a filling. She is freaky about shots, totally screams, yells, has had to be held down. And the idea struck me when they were going to give her this injection. I said, Lex, let's do a guided meditation. I put my hand on her hand and I said, let's do a guided meditation. And I walked her through a relaxing scene and I gave her her usual going to bed meditation. It was unbelievable. The kid didn't make a peep. She didn't move a muscle. She was totally relaxed. It didn't hurt her. She was calm through the entire procedure of even getting the filling the whole thing, the drill, everything, because she was in this state of relaxation. It is amazing the power of it. And I've even seen it in labor. I've walked women through what they call hypnotherapy in labor, which can actually get rid of labor pain, if you can believe it. It's, it's unbelievable, the power of your mind. So these are some of the things that you can do to reduce stress. And another thing I want you to do is I want you to take this opportunity. Maybe do this right after you click off this tape. Tape. I'm showing my age, aren't I? Recording. <laughs> Sit down and write a list of your stressors. Everything you can think of that stresses you out. And then think about what of them are just habits that you could change. I bet you there are some. I bet you it could have to do with the way that you get to work in the morning. Maybe you take a train and that stresses you out or maybe you drive and you need to take a train and you could get some work done on the on the train or you could get some reading or meditation done 
all different kinds of ways that you can change your life. And maybe the things you've done are just force of habit. Maybe that's all it is that you've been doing in the past. The other thing is, remember, some of these habits may actually be people. And maybe there are people in your life that are stressing you out. That either the relationship needs to change or you having them in your life needs to change. Or maybe there are people you really can't get rid of, like your parents or your mother-in-law, you know. And so maybe you just want to really reduce your contact with those people. And next thing, set boundaries. Put boundaries in place. If you don't like the way somebody is treating you, teach them how to treat you better. And don't accept their bad behavior or their bad treatment. Don't accept it from them. Put in a boundary. Say, this is unacceptable to me. I will not accept it. And you will stop doing it or not interact with me. Easy as pie, right? As Anita told me, my therapist, nobody cheers when you set a boundary. And especially when it's somebody close to you, like when I started setting boundaries in my relationship with Adam, it wasn't always so easy. And it made me want to go right back and say, oh, no, 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 no. Don't worry about it. It'll be okay. I, I don't mind. But you know what? It's been so much better for me and for us since I've started setting those boundaries and really keeping to them, sticking to them. And third, I really want you to read the book, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. This book has been transformative for me and for so many of my patients. And basically the idea that Tolly talks about is too many of us live in the future or the past. And too few of us are living right here, right now in the present. And being a burning up type of person, I tend to be a future oriented person, which be living in the future tends to make you anxious. And that tends to feed the burning up even more. So if you're living in the future all the time, try learning with Eckhart Tolle's book to live in the now. And if you're living in the past, you may tend to be a little bit more depressed. And that Tolly talks about is, is very much linked together, living in the past and depression. Tolly really helps you focus on just being, just being right here, right now, completely and totally present, not thinking about what came before or what came after. And the cool thing about that is usually this moment in time is just fine. It's all good. And I'm able to really tune into gratitude and abundance. What is wonderful in my life and what I treasure and what I appreciate. And boy, if that doesn't make you feel blessed and, and happy and is a real great way to overcome stress. So learn more about it with his book because I think it's just been amazing. Finally, one of the final things, if you want extra hormone help, if you feel like this program, maybe it's helped me, Dr. Jen, but you know, I feel like I still have symptoms of hormone imbalance. I have hot flashes. I My moods are just crazy, PMS, or, or I'm in menopause and I still can't get hold of my moods. Maybe you just can't sleep. There's all kinds of symptoms that might be related to your hormones that you might want to check out. Body Logic MD, that's the website for the network I told you that I'm the chief medical officer for. So www.bodylogicmd.com is a great resource to find out if you've got hormone problems and if you've got hormone difficulties. And, um, and it's also a great way to find a doctor who specializes in the stuff that we've been talking about because these doctors are trained in the same way that I was trained and actually I've trained a lot of them myself. And we're visible, we're there in every, pretty much almost every major city. So you can probably find a BodyLogic MD doctor near you if you feel like you really wanna go that extra step to some specialized, individualized care. So you've made it, you've made it this far, you've made it to week three. You've made it to you're gonna to the last D step where you drop gluten and dairy. And I so just want to encourage you to stick with it, to really remember your big whys. Keep that list with you, keep it with you everywhere you go, in your car, in your purse, on the fridge, and remember why you're doing what you're doing. Is it to connect better in your relationships? Is it to get ahead in, in your work? Is it to lose weight, look great, feel great? All of those things are just so important. And you know, what are your goals? Is your goal to be able to go on a trip? Is your goal to be able to just do a 5K in your community? 
Whatever your goals are, keep those in mind and keep those in sight because those are going to keep you motivated because those are what's important to you. And I can't tell you what's important to you. Only you can. And don't forget, habit is just a habit. Habits are, it's just as easy really to have a good habit as it is to have a bad habit. And all it is, now you know what habits are. It's just a matter of rewiring your habits. So watch your inbox because I'm not done yet. I'm going to continue to send you great stuff so that'll help you on this journey to getting your endless energy back. And I'll be sending you lots of stuff ongoingly. So just keep watching your inbox. Keep reading my Dr. Jen uh, emails because I'm going to send you all kinds of stuff that I find really valuable and um, even introduce you to other experts that I think are amazing. And um, so check it out and, and stick with me. And stay connected to me on Facebook. I'm so, it's been wonderful having this private Facebook group. And stay connected with me on Facebook. I'd really like to hear from you. I'd really love to know how you're doing in your quest for endless energy. Makes me so excited to hear. Honestly, it really, to me, the best thing in the world is to hear that the things that I'm doing are making a difference. And if you could, if this made a difference to you, if you could share that with me, I would be so much more than grateful because that's what really keeps me going. That's what really rewards me and keeps me gratified. That's really what this mission is all about. It's to change the lives of thousands and if not maybe even millions of women and even men as well, couples and, and even kids, you know, changing things for moms changes things for a lot of people around them. So please, if this has helped you, please just let me know. I would love to know because it really keeps me going. And also, if there's something else you'd like to see, something you need more information about, let me know because that just might be the next program that I put out for you. And um, don't forget to submit recipes. And I can't wait to hear from you with your recipes. And I'm going to put them all together in our community cookbook. And I'm so excited to share that with you. Thank you. I really want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's been my honor and privilege to walk you through this three-week journey to getting your spark back. I know what I did worked for me. I know what I did work for hundreds of my patients in my office, and I am just so excited to help thousands of you out there, and I'm excited to help you, you change things in your life and make your life better step by step by step. I'm, it really is a great privilege, and I feel blessed to be able to do it, and I'm grateful to you for letting me into your home and letting me take this journey with you. Finally, this slide is a slide of me in the desert in Dubai. Adam took it. I was lucky enough to be invited to speak to other doctors in Dubai to teach them about hormones and energy and all of the stuff we've been talking about. And um, we went on a trip into the desert and I took this picture and it just reminds me of the feeling of endless energy and how with endless energy that anything is possible and that's why it's like my new motto endless energy equals boundless possibilities with endless energy you can do anything wishing you the best of great health great happiness and of course amazing energy see you on facebook